Hey, what's up dudes, Daxus here, and welcome back for another NHL 18 shootout commentary. Now, this is probably going to be my last NHL 18 video, I mean, NHL 19 does come out tomorrow, so I'm pretty excited for that. This will definitely be the last upload for NHL 19. And i also like to mention that I do leave on the 12th, so it's a couple days from now. And I will be back probably in either two weeks time or three weeks time. I'm not too sure how long I'll be gone this time. But I, I am going back early to my camp job, so that's kind of a thing. But uh, anyways, in this upload, I'm going to be covering the, the trade that sent Max Pacioretty, number 67, the captain of the, the, the Montreal Canadiens, to the Vegas Golden Knights in return for two-way forward, left winger Thomas Tatar, Nick Suzuki, a center playmaker, young and upcoming. I think he's about 19 years old. And then a second round pick from the upcoming draft here. So it's a pretty exciting trade. It's fairly blockbuster, I'd say. I mean, Vegas is picking up a really good goal scorer in Max Pacioretty. I mean, Max Pacioretty does have 226 goals and, and 448 points. So that's about half his points there in 626 games played in the, with the Montreal Canadiens. So Vegas is getting a really good goal scorer here. I imagine they're going to make a really deep playoff run this year also. I mean, they're fairly dangerous with the addition of Max Pacioretty to the team. They, they did make it to the cup final, and I think they're, they're attempting to make it further than that. And it, if they do win the cup, I am going to regret seeing Max Pacioretty go. But until that happens, we'll, we'll see what happens, really. But uh, on the other side of things, Montreal Canadiens have acquired Thomas Tatari, who is a second line proven left winger. I imagine that's where he's going to be slotted in, while Max Domi would take the first line with Drouin and Gallagher alongside with him. And I think the idea is that Montreal is going through a rebuild. It's pretty obvious, kind of a rebuild, kind of like a retool also at the same time. I'm not too sure is what it looks like. To me pretty much so not only did the Montreal Canadiens acquire Thomas Tatari they also acquired Nick Suzuki who is an upcoming playmaking center and he's played with the OHL for like about three years now and in his first year he had 38 points in 63 games played and then in his second year he had 96 points with uh, 65 games played and this previous year he had 100 points Right after the year, he, he scored 96 points. And in my opinion, it looks like he's going to be a really good goal scorer. Goal scoring center, pretty much. And that's kind of what Montreal needs at the moment. I mean, they're not going to get him. I don't think they'll get him right away. He may play a couple games this year, maybe. I'm not too sure. I don't think he's that exactly ready to make the jump. But you never know. I mean, we got players like Victor Mete who made the jump right away. And... You know, anything can happen, really. Anything can happen now in the NHL. But uh, other than that, they also got the, the second round pick, which, which comes in 2019 from the Vegas Golden Knights, which was previously a Columbus Blue Jackets pick. So this pick has jumped around quite a bit from team to team there. Really good trading asset, I guess. Oh, by the way, the, sh the shootout you probably watch right now is probably the longest shootout I've ever been at. I mean... It went back and forth for quite a while, to be honest. So this is going to be a really long shootout. Yeah, so I don't want to, like, say who won the trade yet, because, I mean, like, you never know. Vegas, Max Petre is definitely going to score 30 goals in Vegas. Uh, it's more than likely it's going to happen, but is that going to be enough next year to, to win the Cup? I mean, every year the, the NHL seems to get more and more difficult with the, the different unique players that come in. And, yeah, it's really dependent on the team, really, and the, the upcoming young guns that they have. And who steps up and who, who, who doesn't step up and whatnot. And, like, let's be honest, a couple years down the road, we're looking at a really scary center depth for, for Montreal, too. I mean, center has been the, the issue in Montreal, but if you look at the prospect pool now, they got Jesperi called Konami. They've got Ryan Paling and they've got Nick Suzuki now to add to that list. So they got quite a bit of centers to, to grow off here in the next couple of years. 
So, a couple years down the road, Montreal is going to be pretty scary down the middle. And if, if they play the cards right, we'll, we'll have even more prospects by then. I mean, if this is a, a real rebuild in Montreal, and if we're when we're not a contender this year, that, in my opinion, as a Montreal fan, I'm okay with that as long as we we play the cards right and we hopefully we get a first pick this year if if that's the case. But if we are a contender, then I hope uh, Montreal makes a really good playoff run because yeah, Montreal's at that stage right now. After this trade, I feel like Montreal. Not, I, I have no idea what Montreal really is. is. Are they a rebuilding team or are they a contender? And it really depends on who steps up and who doesn't step up. Now, if you were to ask me what I think the, the lineup would look like come the opening game, in my opinion, like, this is something I kind of put together. It's nothing too fancy. It just has, like, a black background. But basically, what I think the forward line would look like is Max Domi, Jonathan Duran. Brandon Gallagher taking on that first line while guys like Thomas Tatari, Philip Denault and Charles Houdon can probably take on the second line and then we did if Colt Kinnearmy makes the the NHL I feel like he'd be used as a third line center at least with the Terry Lekkonen and Joel Amir and then Paul Byron, Thomas Placanek and Nikita Sherback taking that fourth line and the reason I think Nikita Sherbach would make the team, I mean, he's a fairly skillful player. I feel like he does deserve a chance in a year that Montreal is probably deemed to be rebuilding. And considering Andrew Shaw is going to be out for until mid-October at least, I feel like giving Nikita, someone like Nikita Sherbach a chance in the NHL to, to grow and get used to it, I, I think it's a really good, good idea and Montreal should take advantage of that. And then I also feel like Paul Byron would probably take on that fourth line or, I mean, even third line if Terry Lackanen is not ready for third line of minutes. But, I mean, Terry Lackanen is a really good player. I feel like he does deserve the, the minutes on the third line there. But uh, other than that, that's basically my two cents on the trade and whatnot and Montreal's upcoming year. I am going to be coming out with NHL 19 content, and so stay tuned for that. But other than that, this has been Stacksuits. Thanks for watching. Peace out, dudes.